The D word is something that still looms over China's economy, and that's deflation. As Sam mentioned, part of the reason why the CPI went up in February was because of the Lunar New Year. We are still seeing, though, that Chinese consumers, especially wealthy ones, are quite nervous. They're still trading down and skipping big ticket items. So going back to Chinese New Year, you saw that the overall travel numbers were 20 percent above 2019. That's great. But when we interviewed hotels, when we interviewed restaurants, the per capita spend was down about 20 percent because consumers are still very cautious about the weak economy. They're cautious about whether or not the government is going to launch a bazooka-like stimulus. Clearly, they're not going to. So consumers are saying, you know what? We're going to spend a little bit more, but we're going to trade down. So be very cautious on luxury goods like a Burberry's, like a Gucci going forward. Um, be very cautious on big ticket items. I think the NEV sector is going to be in for a rough time, like a NEO, as well as a BYD, as consumers still trade down. The D word, deflation, still looms over the economy, frankly. Yeah, I mean, Sean, when you want to sort of pick up an economy, there are four areas that you perhaps would look at. I mean, investment is one that, you know, we've seen out of China. They can't continue to do that. Government spending, yes, that'll inch up, but probably not significantly so. You've seen exports being reined in by a whole lot of the other partners, particularly the U.S. Then you have the consumer as your, your only aim here, but that is also slowed. So where do they find direction to grow? Yeah, this is a very difficult situation China's facing. We have an aging, broken growth playbook. Clearly, the government can't rely on real estate anymore. You see Country Garden, you see Evergrande, Wanda are all facing issues with their bonds or have gone bankrupt. You can't rely on infrastructure. You know, last year I was in Tibet. Um, I was at 4,500 meters up, and they have incredible roads there, incredible 5G networks. It's better than in London. So there's a limit on how much government can do on the supply side. So you have to get the Chinese consumer to spend more. Now, in the short term, that's not going to be easy. The government is launching out programs to get better access to education, hence the crackdown on new oriental and the education training sector. They're trying to get better access to health care. Slowly, these measures from Xi Jinping's China is starting to work. My firm, the China Market Research Group, estimates that the overall middle class is going to swell from 400 million to 800 million over the next decade. But in the short term, investors need to be cautious because consumers are nervous about the economy still. They are going to be trading down. They'll spend on things like health and wellness. So we're quite bullish on brands like Hoka. We're very bullish on Arcturex and Solomon. Um, but they are going to be penny pitching. But at the end of the day, let's be clear, China's economy is weak, but it's not that weak. If you're a multinational, if you're looking to drive growth over the next three to five years, the next China is China. It's not India. India is only a sixth of the GDP of China. It's not Vietnam. These are small markets. So I actually think investors should be looking long term at China again. It's definitely investable. It's not uninvestable like a lot of naysayers like a Steve Roach is saying. Really good to get your views, Sean, and you, you've in part answered my next question. But uh, you, you allude to in your notes that China tri trades at a significant discount at around about 10 times forward P.E. Uh, to some of the key indices out there in Japan, in the United States. The problem is, is it just another one of those value traps? Yeah, that's a great question, Steve. I think here's the concern. I'm worried about the debt situation in the United States. We've added 15 trillion over the last five, six years. At some point, the roosters are going to call and there's going to be a financial crisis in the United States. Second, when you look at Japan, Japan's in a recession. I don't understand when you look at the fundamentals why equity prices in Japan have gone so high. The reason why I surmise is most of my hedge fund and mutual fund clients, the guys who are supposed to pay me, have not paid me for the last six months because they're too scared to invest in China. So all of my clients have been shifting their focus to Japan rather than China, but that's more of a momentum play. I think the Nikkei could have some rough times in the next couple of weeks, and I think that the institutional investors are going to come back into China. I'm actually meeting with 12 different hedge funds from the United States who are flying into Shanghai this week to meet with me because there's starting to be more interest in getting exposure to China again. It's too early to call a bull market. You still have to be very cautious. The economy is still weak. Don't get me wrong. Again, the D word looms over China. There is still a weak job market, but the valuations are too low. I personally, and I'm not a professional um, investor, but I put a lot of money into the A shares in Hong Kong about a month ago because I think valuations are way too low.